Okay, I told you that uh, CERN has been following me, and I went to the University of Geneva and showed them all of these things five, six years ago, and they were very interested, and then they just turned away and left me in the woods. <laughs> well, I showed all of these particles, and now they're saying, yep, the guy was right, 100% correct. Now, this was six year, five years ago and I put up light is dark energy until it hits matter and bounces and that's absolutely true now when I went back to look at this and again five years ago I, st I was trying to create how big is the earth actually growing and the earth is growing I was surprised to, I, I forgot a lot of this stuff it takes a certain energy level to do that and we see that in spectroscopy so that is known we see light bouncing off of things, that's known. We feel the heat, that's known. So all of this stuff is obviously, and it's, it's all known. Now, then you go down how much stuff is hitting the earth. Because now it's, there's a weight to this stuff. Yeah, I just showed you that. They say that this is, this is how much it weighs. Now, the earth is growing like unbelievably. Look at when I say how much it weighs. Every electron they claim weighs 0.005584 atomic mass units, something like that. Very tiny amount, but we're being flooded with electrons. It's electron flooding. So what does that mean to the to the growth of the Earth? Listen to this. Look at this. The average per square meter, NASA says, is 1360 watts per square meter, and that's, I believe, per hour. They don't say that, but I'm sure that's what it is. Times a million, which is a million square meters in a square kilometer times 510 million square kilometers, which is the Earth's, they say, is the surface. And it's even more than that because it's hitting the atmosphere. But anyway, let's, but there is some radiation. Anyway, that would be the watts of the Earth. Now, the watts of the Earth times the electrons in a watt, which weigh that this year, is how much the Earth is growing per hour. All right, these are particles that were captured by Rodney Warren. He's doing the, uh, the experiments. But Now, here's where I'm showing the muons. <laughs> Those are the muons, and these are the electrons. And they're coming through the air, concussing, spinning, wobbling, exactly what the CERN is saying, and Fermi Lab, and all those people. And not a single one of them will respond to anything that I have said in the last six years. I know they watched it. I know they had the information. I know they received it. I sent it to literally everyone. And then they created some gigantic magnet to try to prove that it, you, either I was wrong or they were right or whatever they're thinking. And they proved that I was right. I'm closing the case. You see this? I sent that to them in 2016. Then they come out with this big thing. Step aside, sir. Cheaper way to break open physics. Tabletop experiments. That's because I did them. And Rod Warren did them. And why do I say that? Because I sent them my work six years ago, five or six years ago. And now they went and they tested it and they found out, yes, I was correct. It said if there is an inconsistency, it could indicate the standard model is incomplete and in need of revision. It's, and yes, it is totally incomplete and totally wrong. And I showed this as, well, right here. Boom. 2016. Light is dark energy until it hits matter and bounces. I even calculated out how fast the Earth is growing. <laughs> this is six years ago. And I showed the particles. Here it is right there. Here's the muons, and here's the electrons. And here they are in the enhanced. And here's all our experiments. Here's the green particles, the same ones. You see that? And here's the way the waves come. I show this every day. I show it over and over. I've shown this in minimum a hundred times minimum since then. Showing light spinning, showing the particle, showing the acceleration, showing the Venturi, showing the, the Higgs fields, showing everything showing the reverse spinning particle that created a particle nobody knows about. And this was six years ago. So this is not something I just did yesterday. This goes back six years ago. I had to, I had to close this channel. Well, I didn't close it up, but I don't even think these are available to anybody anymore for attacks because of... Uh, academia attacked me just violently and viciously over all my work. And now it's every bit of my work has been proven to be correct, and every bit of their work has been proven to be nonsense.
Now, I tried to get a hold of this guy, and he's never contacted me back. But um, Gerald Gabberly tunes a laser, and he's doing a little tabletop thing, just like Rod and I did. And he says it's possible, it's, no one knows the electron as well as this guy, Gerald, whoever he is, a physicist. Now, he still doesn't understand what he's looking at. He thinks he's captured a muon. Well, he's captured an electron. He's talking about he's suddenly moving from the fringes of physics to the limelight. Well, I, I was on the fringes of physics, but I had the limelight long before him. It's about to open a first-of-a-kind research institute. Well, why won't they talk to me? Here's his research institute, Center for Physics Tabletop Experiments. That's exactly what we did. Nobody will contact me back. I don't know. I'm just lost in the woods with everybody that I've ever tried to, to work with. As soon as you come with any evidence, they don't want to see it. They want to be the ones to come with the evidence before you. And once you you're ahead of them, then you're done. Squash sphere. I don't know. It is amazing. See here, even researchers long associated high energy physics starting to look at low energy experiments. A glimpse beyond the standard model. Exactly because I showed them what was beyond the standard model as I just showed you. That was six years ago. So I'm not making this up. In 2016. And there's your muons right there. The black particles. Once again, I, I get upset. This is 2016. This is five minimum years ago. And then they went and stole my work. This guy in 2018 so here we go a couple of years later, and I sent this to all these same people. Step aside, sir, and there's a cheaper way to break open physics, tabletops. On a, doing it on a tabletop, which I have. And then they claim all these different things, uh, this guy, and I tried to contact him. He's, he's never sent anything back. He says if they got them, or, or they made big physics so they could get a ton of money, flush with cash and prestige. And they got all the facilities they wanted, billions and billions. And listen to this now. They got all these facilities sprung up. Stanford, Fermilab, Batavia, Illinois, CERN, Geneva, quarks, muons, neutrinos. I've shown all of those. And guess what? I went to the, um, what is it, uh, University of Geneva. And I showed them all this stuff six years ago. And they said, wow, this is amazing. And then they just turned away from me. So uh, they knew I had this stuff. CERN knew it. Everybody knew it. I sent it to NASA, to Johnson Space Center, to everybody. I said, somebody's going to respond. Nobody. Zero. This is what we're up against. So now they went ahead and did all this. So this guy came on a couple years after I showed what to do. And he says, yeah, this stuff works. We can show this stuff on a tabletop. So I'm not making this stuff up. I showed it way long ago, and then they decided, well, let's make some billion-dollar magnet to test this. Now, I'm going to tell you something else. They still don't have this right. They have never captured a muon. They have captured an electron. And what they did was they have that electron spinning here all by itself, confined by electrons pushing this way, electrons pushing this way, all the way around. And they've got them spinning in a circle, being forced to spin and spin and spin, and they will never be able to escape that magnetic push to shove, so they stay in that circle. And they've had some of them running, I guess, for a year or so um, in other experiments. I'm not positive, but I, I believe there was one that would ran for a whole bunch of time, and they turned off the frequency modulator or something, and it, and it crashed. And, Anyway, my point being is they still don't understand this. That's not a muon in there. You cannot get a muon to stay on its own for more than a fraction of a millisecond. I will show you. Now, again, I know I must sound a little frustrated, and I am damn frustrated. I've been showing this, again, six years, five, six, more than that. But, you know, I was finalized with my research six years ago, five years ago. And then I started presenting everywhere in the same nonsense. Now, that is the muon. That's the black ball. I show it over and over and over and over and over. And it was attached to the electron. And in their normal configuration, it's a white, I mean a black ball and a white ball. Not a shower. 
as it comes through the air in high speed and crashes into a different medium, which is what Cherenkov radiation is, it creates electron showers, which is the white spray. And let's look at that. All right, I showed you what they're looking for is a white particle and a black particle, a muon and an electron that causes electron showers. Well, they're just flowing through the air right now. They're not concussing in what you would consider to create Cherenkov radiation, but they do when they go through the Venturi. And this is, we did nothing to increase the value of this energy other than to put it through a creating a crusher, which is two round pins, and it forces the magnetic regions to collapse and creates the separation of the actual muon, which I showed you is the black ball, from the electron in these showers. And I will show you that actually happening, and here it is. And it's time to see this for what it is and to stop running away from me. There's the black balls that I just showed you were attached back here as a, bo a box of particles. And now, not only did this fall apart into two electrons, that's an electron, which is half of a photon. An electron burns, it associates, it attacks, it's lightning, it's static, it's electricity. That is light. Bing bong. Electron. Bzz. Different story. Now, what do we have here? The muons separated co completely, 100%. Nobody can convince me that they are not detachable, absolutely for certain. So what do we have here? 100% electrons. That's your energy. If you can somehow harvest this chunk and send it down through a, 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 a absorption device which would create that energy and let it spit back out in that power to find the black particles. That's all it's doing. It wants to find that black particle. And you can't tell me that they took a muon, that black particle, and they have it floating around inside. There's nothing affects that. That black is not affected by anything whatsoever other than it wants to be attracted to electrons. That's it. That's its life story, and they cannot stop that from happening inside their magnetic accelerator. I don't care what they say. I will stand in front of them and show them they're wrong. They are looking at an electron. They are looking at one of these. They have separated an electron away from all of the other bits and pieces, and they have this pushed to shove in the middle of their little device, sending it around in circles. Come to me. Let's talk. They, this, is, this research that they are doing right now is based on the research that I showed them five, six, seven years ago. It's a long time I've been showing this to them. And finally, they're talking about it. But I want to be involved, too. Why shouldn't I be involved? All right, thank you.